quick shout out to T Rex. Happy birthday, young man. <laughs> I'm sure that in time, when you learn English and how to function as a human being, you will look back on these casts of Arkosh and appreciate this shout out. And if Happy you do birthday, learn to man. function as a human being, I would love to hear who has raised you. Uh, <laughs> probably the 95% of that will come from your mother. Um, no doubt. Or more. Anyway, um, all right. It's time to get all the voice lines out, everybody. Let's go. Come on, a little bit more. That's great. Great. There we go. Okay. Right I can on. just uh, right. picture that voice being used towards T Rex during his first birthday party. Yes. Just imagine the joy. Oh, that is a good <laughs> camera <not> shot. <laughs> I think that, was... that should be a new segment, actually. Guess the forehead. We could have that for. <laughs> then we ask all the players to angle their cameras. You can literally only see their forehead and their hair. And then you need to guess the player based on the camera shot. That sounds great. Do you think we could do that for talent? Would that be easy? I think it would be pretty easy. That would be pretty easy, I think, yeah. I want to play oh. that game right now. Okay. Oh, we've got four disconnects on Arkosh. Um, yep, that's the satanic ritual. Awaken. Yes. Uh, one guy is not on board with the 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 meta here, and that is Gremlo. Uh, hardly surprising that he's not on board with you know what you're supposed to do. The rest are coming back in though, so that's very nice. All right. Uh, yeah, from a draft perspective, Lacoste in particular seemed to like Arkosh in this. Um, I feel like it's a little bit so-so. I think some of Arkosh's heroes are really strong in this patch. I like, especially Queen of Pain is a very meta hero right now. Uh, Tide in the right game can be very strong. Not too sold on the other heroes in general, but if the conditions are good, I can definitely get behind all of them. Uh, you look on the other side of the table, you've got Spirit Breaker and Weaver, which are like top picks. And the rest is, again, kind of situational heroes. So. Um, just overall how the lineups work, I think Arkosh is very dependent on Ravage to take fights. Uh, Simply 2 based are online almost all the time. Their lineup is super fast. They have Glimpse, Charge, and Coil for awesome initiation possibilities. Uh, the only thing they really need to be careful of is there's two big boys in front that are hard to kill in Tide and Wraith King. So ideally you want to find the other targets first. Um, worth Indeed. noting about Arkosh, uh, I think Forsaken Oracle's best performances so far have generally been on this Queen of Pain, so having targeted picks against him could prove to be very valuable. Oh, there's a smoke rotation. Oh, we found little Nick. gosh, with the Wraith Fire Blast. That's a big Thunder Strike, though. They have to be careful with that damage. Lil Nick, he has Bash level one, going with the Suns fan strat. Looks like the blocks from Flea might be enough, but there's a Gush to follow again, and Double King with the Wraith Fire Blast. Surely, they will need it. They will not. <laughs> They will just get the right click. They're waiting to right click him. There it goes. <laughs> I first love blood. that sequence. That was so funny. So they're trying to give the first blood to Quop, who is outranged and missed a scream of pain. And then they still <laughs> try to give it to Quop for like another five seconds until they just like screw it. For and it's going to cost them the bounty rune. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep, three no. bounty runes for simply two base as Empyrean will walk away with his life. <laughs> Oh, I love that. That's a great start to the make, game. That would make a great highlight reel, just that one 30-second segment. <laughs> the thing I love about Arkosh is that they go for these first bloods. Like, they just, yeah. It feels like they roll the dice. Maybe that's the disconnection. They're praying to Satan mm. and looking for guidance as to which path they should take in order to get the successful first blood. I thought they were playing on really bad computers and they had to disconnect closed Dota in order to open a browser and RNG a number. And then that decides yep. where they go with the smoke. That is possible as well. Knowing that Slacks will not provide them with the proper uh, computers to be able to play. If you are but looking just at the... in and mm -hmm. watching these teams for the first time, the gyrocopter <laughs> top Ollie is in fact not the Ollie from Chinese Dota that has got uh, very high major placements, as well as TI. Uh, as a support player, this is an NA carry player. So just uh, I don't it's know if Boris, he likes them right? or if they've had the same name. Maybe his name is Oliver, and he was when he Wait, was choosing a nickname. What, what happened to Boris? Is that not him? Maybe I'm behind on my times here. I thought Boris was their carry, unless this is a... Guess everybody's just something. changing names. Yeah, it, we'll call him Ollie, just yeah. in case. I mean, he could be the Ollie from the Chinese scene, like you said, so you never know. Nope. 
I guess that would be against the rules. So definitely not breaking the rules here. Hope he's gonna play Anadol. Axe next game with the naked Axe set, so we can call him Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Ah, that was such a bad joke, but I love you it. You love it I because really you're you, it. and that is why I like casting with you. Because you laugh at my bad jokes, even though I know they're bad, I make them because you like them. You know, I do this it for is you. the perfect time to know when something you say is funny to me because it physically hurts to laugh. That's going to see a gush. Imperian looks like he'll TP out. Oh, but he dies. So now has to make the walk of shame. Second kill for Arkosh. Anyway, back to my point, Cinder. You'll know mm -hmm. what I truly find funny because it physically hurts me to laugh. Yeah. So I reserve it for only the best jokes, and your Muhammad Ali one was top-notch. Very Thank smart. you. I pride myself on uh, knowing American culture. Thank you. Oh, Gremlo with the TP out. Not even close. Yep. He's fine. Did the math. Double King on the Wraith King. So he is sitting on 13 and 3 CS. And then the other side, Ollie is at 16 and 2. And then the mid lane is really what we should be looking forward to is Rioya versus Forsaken Oracle. Quap versus Puck. A tried and true matchup that dates back to Dota 1, Cinderin. Yep. One of the Just classic one of the classic matchups to settle a uh a disagreement in a pub game you've just had is 1v1 me, and the options were Shadow Fiend versus Shadow Fiend or Quap versus Puck. Why was it not Quap? Why was it not uh, also duplicate heroes for Quap and Puck then? Because I think those matchups really suck 1v1 if it's Mirror. <laughs> uh, uh, Shadow Fiend just feels like a you know very high skill based matchup about like skill shots and clutch CSing or whatever. But phase shifting the strikes and they're. Shadow Strike. Yeah, but you can't that do that if you're both playing Puck. That's true. But you can dodge Illusory Orb. Yes. That is the correct spell that Puck <laughs> does indeed have, Shen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it hurts. Stop making oh. me laugh, please. Gremlo bot lane. All right, the swarm onto He's two. He's in trouble. To come through as well from Lil Nick. Yeah, Gremlo looks to be donezo here. Pops a fairy farm. He gets bashed right after. Oh, the right. Back. Another bash. Go for another. It. Double King. Oh, one more. Getting shikuchi on, and he looks like he's going to drop in the midst of the tier one tower it, here. Man. And Flea TP's back to base. So evening it up is simply two base. Do you agree with the panel with the fact that simply two base have not looked good, mainly in part to their ridiculously hard schedule thus far? Uh, I'm not sure, because, like. Oh, hang on. Imperium. Yeah, you're going to have to hang on, Cinderin. I know you really want to talk right now, Empyrean. Looks like he's going to limp away. Just fine, Ollie. Continuing with the rocket barrage. Oh, oh another gush. Empyrean staying around dead. quite a while here. Looks like he's resigned to his death. Gets off the Thunderstrike. A nice tanking from Monkey. As Ollie will be forced out again. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a, it can be a little bit difficult to place these teams relative to each other. I think it's also what the panel was talking about earlier, that it's less defined, right? We used to have, oh, hang on, Kyle. Mid lane. Or yep. uh, expanded. Oracle. That's the level advantage coming to fruition. Should mention that these Looks players like... are, of course, using aliases instead of their real names to conceal who they are. And the camera is randomized. So that was a picture of That's Kyle, right. uh, who is totally not playing Queen of Pain. Maybe next time it will be a different player in the camera shot. Like, maybe next time. Who knows? Gremlo looks familiar. Yeah. I feel like I saw him earlier today. Um, Something that we haven't really discussed is the... Because of the roster swaps, I guess you could call, for Arkosh Gaming, some players have to play things that they're not particularly good at. Right? Like Dota? Uh, well, that, that's going a little far, I do believe. I mean, they did make it to upper it, bracket. It was a joke, Shannon. Come on. How do you no, take you're that? You're very shit? serious right I'm, now. Gremlo so getting chased rude. and charged. Lil Nick, another bash. Man, he's getting all the bashes that he wants. All right, I'll answer your question easily. now a little bit more about how okay. hard this run has been for them. Oh, never mind. He's fighting tough. You know what? Hold your you'll, horses. You'll never know. There's no stop in action. You'll never all right, know. Rioya gets lifted as he TPs to the top lane. Monkey getting chased now. We'll dodge the illusory ore, but looks like he'll inevitably find his way to the grave. Although, can he find a little avenue here? Rocket Barrage Get is enough to finish it. him off. And Glimpse, Crow, will just TP out. 
Anyway, what I'm trying to say, Cinderin, mm -hmm. is Gremlo, by their own admission, not very good at position five. <laughs> oh, I just made myself laugh. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, that's not good. You gonna you gonna talk at any point? Sure. What do you want to know? I asked you like three different questions, and you just I feel like them. I gave great answers so far. Yeah, you've started talking, and then you stop because there's a fight, and then you just never continue. That's not how your job description works, you know. I have a job description. <laughs> One would hope. <laughs> oh my God. That makes a lot of sense. Right. I don't know. So I, I think. All right, I'll try to answer the first question first. Okay, about two base. Yeah, their schedule okay. might have looked a little bit rough. Uh, I don't know if their performances have been particularly like inspiring of a team that you feel like has a chance to get top four. Uh, and at the end of the day, the difference between third and sixth isn't that important anyway. It's definitely a team I would expect to stay in Division One based on their players, right? So um, this series kind of is, I don't want to say a must win for them, but an expected win. All right, we've got Good Sonic Oil. Wave. Nice Sonic Wave. Can't dodge that one, it seems. Might survive. Oh, Forsaken Orsho getting Silence. Illusory Orb, a couple more right clicks will do. Just not enough time. Wait for that Silence to blink out to safety. So another death for Forsaken Oracle. But would you agree, like going into the season, do you think Simply 2 Base, just looking at the roster, was a team you would place in the upper half of this division? Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, I guess when we say upper half... I think they'd be a wild card... They'd be a wild card for fourth. Right, yeah, because we already have three teams like quote-unquote unlock that you would expect there, right, in Undying, yeah. Quincy, and EG. And then we'd have four Zoomers. And then after that, like four Zoomers versus this team, so maybe somewhat of a ballpark, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, they've definitely yeah, not looked as good as they could have. That's... I think the thing that surprised me the most is not that they've lost those games, but the fact that they have not won one single game. That's actually quite surprising because they looked pretty solid last season. Obviously, the rosters have changed quite a bit, but it's a lot of the mainstays here. Yeah, so their order of games was... Oh, hang on. Should be fine Go ahead, Cinder. Go so ahead. So first they Please. played Quincy. Oh. Then they played Undying. Then they played four Zoomers, and then they played ET. So you're right, like the four teams we just mentioned as the favorites, they played them back to back to back to back. It wasn't just three of them. It was literally all the best ones. But. Oh, man. Another coil for Forsaken Oracle. And the silence to follow to prevent the blink. Just great layering from Ryoya. They are hounding him. It's a very annoying matchup for Queen of Pain if you get caught first and you don't have a defensive item like Yules or Orchid, so you can stop the spell barrage, then you're kind of in trouble. Obviously, this early you would have neither. And they're taking huge advantage of finding Forsaken Oracle out in the middle of nowhere. Um, but yeah, I, you know what? I would say it is surprising that they didn't at least win one or two games, right? In those four series, you would expect them to. What the caliber well, players they have at least. With game. four Zoomers, I don't even think I consider them top four based on their roster changes. Like, they're a wild card for it, but mm -hmm. I would have put them in the same breath as simply two base to start the season. So, yeah, a little bit surprising. And what about the... The changes for Arkosh Gaming, Cinderin, like we, like I discussed about ten minutes ago at this stage, that you never answered. Do you think Gremlo is a good support player? I don't see why not. I, I don't think the okay. diff. I don't think going from so what was it he played last season? Was it four awesome. or three? He did play three, because I feel like he's better at four than five probably. If you're somewhat comfortable on four, the jump to five, I would say is it's a smaller jump from four to five than from three to four, if that makes sense. Now uh, we have another strike, and yeah. down goes the the Gremlo man on the Nature's Prophet. Now you're making me question myself whether he was four or not. I'm not sure. I think he was three. I think you're right. Crow has been four the fudge, whole time. Now. Fudge core, so. Which I didn't even pay attention to the bands. Was Pudge banned? Like, why are we not seeing that hero? Position five Pudge sounds great. Yeah. It sounds right up Arkosh's alley. Mm. As Monkey on the Tidehunter has his Hood of Defiance. Uh, what are people opting for now on Tide these days, Syndrome? Like, after just getting the first, like, the Hood type item. Mm. Are we seeing, like, because I've seen tons of Ags. Without going blink, we've seen, you know, blink is yeah. always one of those, depending on the game. I think, 
I think Blink is really good in this game, right? You're playing against these elusive heroes, so you want to get that immediate jump, like the immediate payout where you can kill someone with Queen of Pain. So I think Dagger would be good. Uh, Ags is okay here because, like, your Wraith King somewhat takes advantage of it, but I would, I would be happier to see a Dagger, I think, overall. He is going Ags by the looks of it, though, on Monkey, but... Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit concerned with their ability, honestly, to kill Puck and Weaver if they don't have a blink on, on Tide, right? Like, what are you relying on to catch these heroes? Your Quap is not having a good game, and it's not even going Orchid. So, you're just trusting that you can handle this with Rubik, primarily? Hmm. Well, either way, we've seen two kills that we didn't talk about, because we apparently didn't find them interesting enough, Cinderin. Disruptor hmm. <laughs> and Nature's Prophet. And you can look at some itemizations for the position ones since this is turning into a bit of a farm fest, although we are seeing a little bit of potential action. Ryoya was looking for another coil target, but won't find it. Just a loser orb after taking. Oh, okay, he's going to get Telekinese, though. Pops the haste. Didn't see that in his inventory. That, that's a getaway free card. Uh, Ollie is going Ags Gyro, by the way. Very no standard. surprise. And Double King has the armlet and going for the Deso build. So we're going to see a lot of... So he'll be going to blink after the Deso based on his uh, choices right now. That'll put... Maybe that's the reason that you don't go for blink on Tide? Yeah, it's part of it, I think. Um, but again, Wraith King stun is not a reliable way of catching Puck or Weaver, right? Yeah. So it's good, but it's not... You're not catching those heroes with it. You're killing Disruptor. You're killing Gyro, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Charge onto Crow. Yeah, see the lift. charge. Yeah. What's up the safety, but there's the telekin or the the glimpse back into the fray. Oh, he's gonna be able to get the rabbit. Five man rabbit! Onto five heroes, my goodness. Weaver's gonna be the first to fall. There's the coil though. Little Nick in a lot of trouble. That's three dead. Where that coil was stolen, in fact. Very nice turnaround from Arkosh. Four dead in the blink of an eye, and Crow with a god tier steal. This is literally a <laughs> <laughs> this is literally the best case scenario for Arkosh, is that the enemy team goes for Tide, uses this many spells, don't kill him, and then he gets to Ravage. Like, this is a better start to a fight than if they get a free kill and Disruptor, for example. Like, mm -hmm. And just play the fight 5v4. It cannot get better than this, because not only does he stay alive and get this off, there's everything is expended. So this is just a free cleanup crew. Great steal, like you said there, from Crow and... No problem whatsoever for Arkosh to clean house here. So nice start from them here. 2k gold lead from that. Oh, this guy. It looks like he's having a great time. Just wait until you have to show up for work tomorrow, buddy. Wait, that's not tomorrow, <laughs> Saturday. But, yeah. you know. Really in his element uh, on that five nature's profit. That he's, he's carrying it hard. Bottom tower. Okay, yep, tier one tower being pressured here. Little Nick trying to take out the wave. Gremel in the vicinity, though, is now level 8, so that fight helped him out quite a bit. They're going to use Fort and likely just give this up. Gremel with a last-ditch effort with that all just delaying a little bit. Here's Crow. Ooh, still has the coil applied to Puck, but there's the counter from Empyrean. Static Storm onto 2, and the charge from Lil' Nick gets off another strike as well. Finally, they take out Crow, and there's the actual coil from Ryoya, but it's only on the Tidehunter again. Call down comes through. Little Nick looks like he's going to live through this for now, but Forsaken Oracle, Oracle finishes him off in the in the end. So a two for one. And now Forsaken Oracle. I keep wanting to say Forsaken Archer, by the way. I know that you don't understand why. That's because that's, that's I... a hero from uh, another game that you used to like. Wow, how do you know that, actually? It was a card and artifact. That's, that's a lie. Yes. <laughs> All right. I did, I did know that. It, um, I think I even Ooh. know one of its spells somehow. Do I? Right, because it's in Dota now. Rioja gets I Sonic think. Wave inside the Sprout. Illusory orbs to safety, but there's Forsaken Oracle again. I think he should be okay. The glimpse, or rather, the yep, he's not even the one being charged. They're going on Gremlo, bottom. Yep. Little Nick, Charge. I mean, I can understand why. Gremlo is a really disgusting target. You just can't help but try to go for him. Oh, he got out. He just yeah. Sprout TPs. All right, let me just and impress you even more. I know what spell Forsaken Archer had that is now in Dota. Okay, what is it? It is Burning Barrage on Clinks. Very, I mean, it's yes. It's not exactly the same, but yes. Do you correct. know why I know oh, this? Ravage onto two. Little Nick inside the Sprout again. 
I'm gonna take a shadow strike to the back of the head with the kinetic field used for zoning purposes. All right, I'll give you a bonus like, point if you know eight. why I know that. Probably because I told you on the podcast. <laughs> yes, correct. And I listen to you and care what you have to say. Yeah, the fact that you listened to me. I mean, I knew I told you. I just didn't think you'd remember because oh, you don't okay. listen to anything I say. So, appreciate that, Cinderin. That's not true. I care a lot. Sure. I remember your birthday, even. That's a lie. It's this Static year. storm. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it hurts. Stop making me laugh. Is Crow going to get chased by Yoya? But there's the stun to follow from Double King. And the charge to come through for a little Nick. Like Buck was able to get out. With that illusory orb now, but he's oh. going to continue to get chased. The he's buyback in here. the Rubik because Gremlo's in a lot of trouble. But oh, that dagger there. Yep, the blink dagger. All right. Online just in time. They got the Rubik buyback, and they do get out of here. So nice hit and run play coming out from um, from Simply 2 base. Two kills and an escape. It is only the two supports, but, you know, given the... What I like is that they try to put this pressure knowing that there's no Sonic Wave and no Ravage. They're just really trying to... Uh-oh. There's a lot of damage from that crit. Ooh. We'll be fine on Flea. Yeah. Um, that's how you want to play against the Tide Quap lineup. That is exactly what this Dire lineup wants to do, is whenever big spells are down, you want to pressure advantage. It's such a crucial part of Quap and Tide's kit that it's almost like a hero is dead when these two spells are down at the same time. So you can, mm -hmm. you can kind of play the fight like it's a 5v4, if that makes sense. Obviously, you know, they're still there. They have some spells, but the really, really big parts are gone. Um, Especially considering Tide doesn't have the eggs yet, right? So he also has a lot of quote unquote dead gold. There's like 3,000 net worth on this Tide right now that's doing effectively nothing almost. Um, he's sitting well, on he's a got point. some stats. Yeah, stats right. But you don't have Ravage, so you just ignore him, right? Like it's just you play the fight like Tide isn't there almost. You just kill his team. So, yep. But now the spells are up and again, so Arkosh uh... should be looking for the fight of their own very soon. Ravage in 20. With that awful. fight alone, they've pretty much brought this back in. To even territory in terms of just yep. net worth alone. As Forsaken Oracle has the Kaya Sange. He's had that for a little bit now. Uh, gonna be going for the BKB next. Double King. I mean, once he had the Deso, I feel like they could have gone. I mean, they've been fighting a lot, I guess, but Roshan is definitely something they can go for. Has the Blink now as well. So it can start, especially with that Tidehunter Ravage, can start uh, trying to initiate and forcing some fights. Gremlo has his sights on an Orchid as position five. He doesn't learn this guy, does he? I thought he was going to buy Meteor Hammer and Split Push all game until he lost. That's. I think I've played with his that, five that matches his profit style. in a game before. Oh, I didn't watch it. I'm not sure, but. Yeah, he loves that. With Shard on Nature's Profit. Yeah, that sounds what like a, something combo. he would do. But uh, Orchid is obviously great this game. You're playing against Weaver and Puck. It's a, it's an awesome pickup and. Since Queen of Pain doesn't want to buy it here, uh, we did go for the Kai Assange, like I mentioned. Getting it on support is, is pretty good value. And they scanned the pit and actually activated because Rubik was nearby. As there's now a counter scan again. Looks like everybody's just going to pass each other. And for the other side, Ollie on the gyro just finishes BKB, so has the Ags BKB combo. Are you surprised that he went for a BKB so early? Because typically you see Ags into like, um, I don't know, Maelstrom or whatever right click you want to go. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised. I, I guess w the way they're thinking about it is that they don't want to leave a moment of opportunity here in the mid game where Arkos is just way too overpowering with their team fight. So if he has this as like an insurance policy, it comes at the cost of lower farm. If he had a stat item, he would be getting more gold on the map right now. Uh, but at the very least, they can protect their key fights or the key areas if a fight has to break out. Uh, I'm kind of with you. I think a lot of gyros would have honestly gone for a completely different build this game. I think many gyros would have gone for the high stat build with Crystallis uh, and just farmed a lot more uh, than Ollie has here. But he's still, I mean, he's still sitting at 240 CS. It's very respectable, right? So, But it's a little bit more yep. fight-centric in the build than farm. Yeah, he's only a thousand behind Wraith King, who farms quite well for his name as Crow. All right, has Shikuchi, but it's glimpsed back and brought down. So they get the tier one tower in addition to Jerubic. Can we see uh, Flea's reaction to that kill, please? Thank you. All right. <laughs> great call, Cinderin. You make a great producer, by the way. Mm -hmm. As we have a smoke. Whenever something fun happens, we can just swap to Flea's camera, and then it's a forehead moment. 
And it looks like this smoke will not come to any sort of a successful conclusion here for simply two based. Rioya just clearing the wave, trying to create as much space as possible. Looks like he'll get away as well. Uh, I assume he has BKB on the way. Nope, it's Sange. Oh yeah, it's a Puck. Why would I? <laughs> BKB on Puck would be very strange. It is, uh, it is bought sometimes, uh, but I don't think this is the game for it. If he needs a defensive item, he'll likely just buy you ults. Cutting a little bit close there with the Wraithfire Blast. Didn't need to be that fancy, but, you know, testing the ping and all. True, true. He's going to get another haste rune, so we'll probably feel very cocky. And of course, I mean, the big turnaround of the game, at least the beginning of the game, because Simply 2Base was doing just fine, was that steal of the coil. So he just has to be careful of that steal in particular, because as well as it's worked against Quap and Arkosh Gaming in general, it works just as well against their own team, considering the mobility. And even better, actually, against their own team. Yeah, you always got to be careful with Puck against Rubik, but, you know, you can coil instant phase shift. You need to have very good reactions as, as Rubik to steal then, but then you've used phase shift. So, you know, if you don't have any line of defense after that phase, which is currently the case for Puck, you do need to keep a little bit of an eye on that and be careful. Um, mm. Nature's Prophet Orchid could come into play as well if that exact situation arises, but for now, hasn't really had too much trouble, Rioya. Has died twice, though. It hasn't been the cleanest Puck performance he's ever had. Gremlo, I, hey, I'm going to give credit where credit's due. He's almost done with Orchid. I don't know whose farm he's taking as a result. He's really not playing position five at all. Looks like uh, Rubik is. <laughs> but he's not too far away from getting that, and I would assume Shard right afterwards, knowing him quite well. This move from uh, Arkosh is very predictable. They just gushed and fate bolted mid lane and were not visible while doing it, so they are expecting a Oh, call, very predictable. He's still and getting a kill I mean, he even ping, he pinged it himself. He did ping that they were casting the spells there, so he had to have been anticipating that smoke, but I think he wasn't expecting them to go for a small weaver kill in the mid lane. He was expecting them to go for, like, triangle or looking for the carry gyro, but obviously, simply two base heroes just weren't placed in those areas because of his ping out. Oh, yeah, he left himself like It's going to be a fast and, rush. Yeah, that's pretty quick. Deso and Gush. We'll do this relatively quickly. A little bit of skelly boys. Did they all die already? Now they're back. They're back for their second round, which is their favorite. The question is, who gets the Aegis? Will it be Double King or Forsaken Oracle? It will be the Quap. I always find, I mean, it depends on the lineup, but giving Wraith King the Aegis can sometimes backfire because they just ignore you to an even higher degree than they are already, right? So, I like it on these mobile heroes more so, if you have a choice. But I think the other consideration, correct me where I'm wrong, is uh, the Aegis oh, for whoever's yeah. hitting high ground as Disruptor gets decimated. But they're not really ready to go high ground. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's time for that yet. So I'm with you. Oh, well, might oh, use charge. the Aegis here. Yep. Atos. Atos the into the Nether Strike. He needs one bash. No, not going to get it. He needs oh. a charge, though. They have vision, though. Oh, Sonic Wave, Forsaken Oracle, preserving the Aegis. It wasn't a waste, he said. Well done. Oh, Rioya. Uh-oh. Yeah, Puck. Oh, gets decimated as well. The minus armor just out of control. I, I feel like we've All talked about this before. All you have to do is get before. that lift. I feel like we've talked about this before. Is there a more satisfying attack in Dota than Wraith King's crit? I feel like it beats Kutakos. I feel like it beats Kutakos from, from PA. Like, nothing is better than Wraith King's crit. It's just I so agree. satisfying. All right, what's the most satisfying spell in general? I mean, that's an easy one. I shouldn't have asked. Oh, I like Finger of Death. Really? I, yeah. was gonna, I mean, Culling Blade is the classic. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Culling Blade for sure. All right, but I'll have a little wild card here, Cinder, and Double Edge for me just feels so good. Especially with that terrible shard, which I love buying, by the way. It's pretty good sometimes. Sometimes. Right, there goes the tower. As expected, Wraith King with Deso loses the last hit battle against Melee Creep. It does happen. <laughs> and Flea getting close to Maelstrom. So he's going to, of course, turn that into a Gleipnir. Nice right Sonic wave there. I, I would say this is clearly worth it. Oh, I love that remix. Can we keep that going? 
Oh yeah, that's oh, nice. That sounds like a siren. Uh, it kind of does actually. All right, everybody evacuate the map. A... We're under attack by right, Spirit Breaker. Nick gets the charge off, but here comes Forsaken Oracle trying to keep them at bay. Wow, Ravage onto one. Yeah, that's not the greatest. At least they'll find them. Yeah, Rioya comes in. He's just gonna clean up Rubik in turn. So it's a one for one, and they've used Ravage. These are good fighting conditions for simply two based. If they connect up Gyro here. Oh, Empyrean is in a lot of trouble, though, getting to the high ground, but there's a Static Storm on top. Will they be able to kill off the Puck in the meantime? The they do so. Double kill for Monkey of all Where years. is Gyro? Do you guys want to fight or not? Bottom. Yeah, he just never showed up to this fight. Like, his team are going in with a lot of stuff they're trying to commit for that fight, but they never brought their richest hero and Puck got caught by that Orchid. Didn't have any defensive item, of course. He hasn't itemized for that Orchid at all. And Wow, look at them reaping the reward. This could actually almost be a lane of barracks. I think they're going to get the tower and then have to back, probably. Yeah. But Wraith King's good at this. Indeed. Lots of minus armor like we talked about. Maybe they can stay. The tower that does Where is so. Gyro? There he is. He'll be here eventually. Has TP'd finally. Charge onto Double King. Still has a BKB. Still has Blink. And a second life, of course. And you can see simply two base not super confident in going in. It's, ooh, big crit from Double King. Gets bashed up, though. Have to be careful. 15 seconds on Puck here, but again, Age is still online for Forsaken Oracle. And he's very close to finishing BKB. Another camp will do it for him. Yeah, I agree. A little bit too passive from simply two base. I mean, once Ravage is down, that seems like a good fight if you can just reset. It really feels like that is the, just a go call, right? Like, you used Ravage to kill the Spirit Breaker, who even has buyback, I think, in that moment. No, and, he did not. Oh, he did not have buyback. Okay, but even without it, honestly, they traded him for Rubik, right? So it was a one for one, and Gyro could have TP'd up there if that is, becomes an extended fight, which it did. Okay. Oh. Oh, dude, it is so nice to do that. It's also something about the fact that you know it's coming, right? PA's crits are like a surprise. That's true. With Wraith King, That's you kind true. of feel like you are doing it because you know you're in charge of it. Radiance so. Tower is under attack. And Monkey and company able to take out the tier one bot. You know another spell from Dota 1 that was extremely satisfying that is not nearly as satisfying in Dota 2 is uh, Counter Helix. Do you remember the animation for that in Dota 1? Oh, what was that? It was super quick and it just felt sharper, you know? It felt I actually like don't it had remember this animation at all. Really? Yeah. I loved, loved that spell in Dota 1. But... We make up for it with the Culling Blade this time around. Forsaken Oracle. Pops the BKB, gets charged in the meantime. Looks like he'll be fine. His fleet TP's away. We have to find some old YouTube videos, Cinderin. Yeah. Mogul Khan. My man. My man. That guy. So 5k net worth lead for Arkosh. So from simply two based perspective, what do they need to do here? So then they have, I mean, looking at Gyro, I mean, he's quite farmed, has full Satanic and Crystalis, so Daedalus will be next in all likelihood. I mean, I would, I would just like them to play a little bit more tight. When fights break out, you need to bring the Gyro. He has so much of your team's potential right now, it's not really being utilized. Um, you, you went for a Gleipnir on your Weaver, so like, damage is there. The heroes need to be there and just delivering, especially when Ravage is on cooldown. That's what I would like to see them do. They are going to connect a charge here and kill off Rubik, so that's a start. Yep, and that is a shard and axe. Gyro getting jumped here by Wraith King. We'll turn around. And we have the gush onto Ollie in the meantime, but they're going to focus all their pressure to Forsaken Oracle. Pops a BKB. Gets the Shadow Strike off, but we'll have to back away. Lil Nick just needs a little bit of vision. He's going to oh. get it. There's the charge, but the haste is online for Forsaken Oracle as well. Not sure if they can actually this. finish this off as Double King. Uh, into the fray as well. But they're going to create a lot of space. In the meantime, Monkey's left all to his own devices. Gets dropped inside that Static Storm. Buys back in the game. Remember, he does have his ult to work with. There, Forsaken Oracle stuck inside the coil yet again. Dies. 70 seconds, no buyback for him. All in the meantime, PP's away. And Lil Nick likely will be the next to fall here. But not too bad from simply two base. I mean, they basically even up this game just on that fight alone. Not too bad, but definitely two base. True. That was great, though. They that, that was it. They brought the gyro to the fight. I, 
the way this whole thing transpired with the Spirit Breaker charges and everything, it looked a little bit funky at times. Like, are you actually going to dive that tier two? But what he did up end, up end up accomplishing here is he forced Queen of Pain all the way outside of the fight and even got a secondary rotation over here to try to stop him. And in the meantime, that is when they opened up the left side. Got the teleport from Nature's Prophet, and then they find the glimpse play and get that kill very easily. So, and a nice coil heads up play from Rioya, knowing that there's no BKB on the Queen. Primary target, easy cleanup crew there. So, nicely done. Yep, it was <clears throat> a pretty great bait overall. Dive of the tier two and whatnot. Just created so much space for them to actually uh, just single. I mean, they actually killed Tide inside a static stone. That's the first time this game, I believe. They've tried it like three or four times, it feels like. The monkey still has Ravage, by the way. Went for Boots of Travel, by the way. And it's going for Lincoln's next. Very interesting. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, can I get a slow mo on that? To get one shot. Can I get a slow mo on that? Well, thank you, have to thank you the for the flea reaction. The flea, the, flea, the flea camera will do. Thank you. <laughs> oh. That's See nice. you later. The flea is... Oh, he's going to be shown. Do they have vision? There's the lift. A second kill for Arkosh. Bringing it back into their favor again, but still pretty even game overall. It's close to Roshan Nick. time o'clock now. It is a long respawn, so it's a we know this, that it's in two minutes, so it's close to max. Uh, but the teams don't know. So uh, for for everything Arkosh... Uh, um, for everything Arkosh know, it could be spawning right now. Um, but they will try to just force the high ground right now with their Wraith King instead. And I don't mind it. He's really strong. They do have a Get Out Jail free card with the BKB TP. There's no cancels on the Dire, except, you know, Spirit Breaker Charge and Ult, which will probably be used early in the fight. And then he could... Maybe find a disengage? Let's be a little bit careful yep, with how they low the is. the fort. And oh, one little flat cannon cleans up all the skelly boys, but they do get the successful kill on the oh. melee racks. Oh my <laughs> god. Empyrean. <gasps> he has a big target on his back or something. Glimpse back. Wraith King now completely out of the fight. But Gremlo hmm, not is dead. Out. He's completely dead. Do you think they could have defended that? I mean, Weaver did have buyback. Is it not a big deal that they lose a Rax right now? Uh, I think it's a somewhat hard defense. All spells were ready. Wraith King was in good position. The waves were good. They could have maybe tried. But I don't think giving that one up is that bad. Uh, what you don't want to give up is the Roche. I think if you lose Roche here, the game is going to get really, really nasty. So right. they're ready to contest that, which is good. Gyro buying that Silver Edge will kill off Tide very quickly if he gets on top of him. All right, they oh, see Crow, okay. he's in trouble. Charge in, but here comes Double King, gets off the Wraith Fire Blast, but Lil Nick, super high status. There, is, there it is. The All he finds is BKB, <clears throat> breaks the Tidehunter, limps back, but they're not gonna focus on him anymore. Double King, he doesn't really wanna focus on him because he has a second life, of course. Rubik is dead. Forsaken Oracle jumps in, gets a Sonic Wave onto two. Lil Nick still within the reach here, looking for that Nether Strike potentially, gets a double bash onto Forsaken Oracle. Not enough to get the kill, though. Gyro is dead, however. Lil Nick follows suit. The three for two as Gremlo getting surrounded. Oh, looks like he's just gonna get right clicked down by Rioya very casually. Buy back oh. onto the Spirit Breaker. Now double kill for Double King. Double the pleasure for him. As Rioya. Oh, he gets Orchided just in the. Oh my god, they actually layered that perfectly. That was really great. Execution. Down goes Rioya. So they don't have. They don't have the gush to break the Lincoln Swift, so that had to be Wraithfire Blast. And the moment that connected, they orchided like instantly. Very nicely done. Roshan. Yep, this one Time should go to Arkosh. I don't see how Spirit Breaker plus Disruptor can hold this at all. Uh, if Disruptor comes anywhere near Wraith King, he just gets one shot. So a little bit of a restraining order situation there. It's really got to keep your distance. You think this shard goes to Wraith King? Uh, the Quap has it, Nature's Prophet has it. I wouldn't mind the one on Tide. Ooh, it's going to be Rubik. All right, so we get the Telekinesis. Can also be decent. used on allies. He can throw people out. Like, they can break the coil and then save after. Just throw people really far away. Um, could be a thing. I like it. Yeah, I felt like the Wraith King one is kind of meh this game. I mean, you're not going against any real mana burn. I mean, 
Even the Weaver didn't go for the Mana yeah, Blade Talon, for whatever. example. That's whatever. For sure. I mean, Tide Hunter could have been interesting because uh, you can use the Anchor Smash on buildings. Yeah. But they're not really having issues taking buildings with Wraith King. Also, you know, it's just a it's just a value upgrade, right? It increases the damage and it lowers the cooldown. So it's just it just feels good to get, right? Cooldown goes from four to three. Damage goes up by fifty percent on the base. Oh, damage. You don't have to convince me. I, I love Pretty that decent. shard on Tide. I love um, it. Speaking of things you love when it comes to shards or talents or whatever. Would you say yeah. Wraith King's 25 talent is one of the best in the game? I think it's, it's really, really good. It's... Wait, what is the best in the game? We've had this discussion already. Was it Void Spirit? Yeah, Void Spirit. We like Void Spirit so it's a not lot, the, at least. It's not the best in the game, but this is, like... It is so it's good. It's S-tier, probably. Yeah, it's S-tier, yes. Yeah. Like, if you were Stream to do the good. math on this, I wonder how big of a DPS increase this talent actually is, right? It's got to be well, crazy. To hold that thought, Cinderman. Wow, they're just going to destroy Rubik. No chance to survive there. Well, they do You're the find Gremlo, too. Gremlo. He's just going to get charged again as well. So what was going on? Two freebies well, for simply two base. He quickly chugged, though, so it's all good. <laughs> Flea. Oh, Flea. oh, oh he's going to get clipped by the Sonic Wave. He's Does actually not have time fine. He's limping away he's now. He's actually Yo -yo. dying. Going to force out the BK again. for Forsaken Oracle. Uh, can you make up your mind, Tinder? Fleet Shadow Strike is Fine. not going to kill him. He had stick charges, so he would have died there. There was just enough to get out. I think he might have even maneuvered a little bit of an urn, char uh, urn charge in between the ticks as well. The extra bit. I wonder if they're going to put Leveler on Double King here. They have. I mean, when everybody's back, it's going to be basically a minute and a half with the Aegis. I'm really happy to see this the... talent break down. I think Disruptor is almost level 25, and then this will become very relevant. <laughs> Thanks, Cinderin. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm I'm just trying to find something to talk about, man. They showed me the 25 disruptor talents. What do you want me to say? Like he's level 14. <laughs> <laughs> we can dream. Why can't we hope for One a 70 minute game? Maybe it was to make the point that this is also an amazing level 25 talent, which is true. The Static Storm AoE one is also really nutty. But it might be. Yeah, but it feels like you do need ags. As yeah. Well. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what makes it so good. For sure. It's like, say, I mean, King. it's like saying the Wraith King one, yeah, but you need damage items. Like, yes. If Wraith King doesn't yeah, go damage items, his level 25 talent is pretty garbage. Yeah, but there's no other build, you know? You say that. Disruptor has other choices. He can go four staff. You can go Auras on Wraith King. Sounds terrible. You off can lane, also lose Offlane Wraith King with Pipe Crimson. Yep, and you can lose. Doing just also, that. Yep, probably. You could also Monkey, manage. oh. They see Rio, yeah. Can oh, they, they got the silence. Start this out. Can they layer it? Yes. 100 seconds does have buyback, though. Dude, the Quap shard is so good, man. Shiva's does show Imperium, but he's Didn't actually going to TP out. I, the Quap shard is just, it's so funny, this Quap uh, Puck dynamic, right? Like, Puck has been destroying Kyle earlier on in this game, and then you get the Who? shard on Quap. Uh, Who's Kyle? Forsaken Kyle, look all. Or a Kyle. Sorry, okay. I, I got distracted by the camera shot. I guess they used some old footage again. <laughs> um, the ultimate bait. But yeah, the, the shard on Quap just really changes the dynamic of that matchup. All right, Wraith oh, King's in, double king. Charge, yep. Gremlo's gonna be taken out right off the bat. Double the Ravage from Monkey, make it two. Double buy, make it triple buy back for Simply Two Base, and Arkosh is gonna try to back the hell out for now. Rioya, Lincoln's has already popped. Tries to get out of the arm's length of Double King, does so successfully, and Lil Nick continuing to pressure. We'll be going for Monkey this time, remember. He doesn't have his Nether Strike available, but it does break. If he fancies his luck, he could try runner. for a TP out now that he's cracking that off. Oh, oh it's Rio, the bad. Yeah, in the top lane, though, he's getting stun locked. One more right click will do it. Should be able to blink out the safety, though. A nice counteract play there. Oh, will they actually chase here? Crow is shown. Getting charged, and looks like he'll be brought down eventually. So after what was an initially great fight for Arkosh, forcing out three buybacks, simply two base, get uh -oh. a lot in return. Yes, that's yep. incarnation. He does have his ult, and is in the midst of the tier two towers. So he has to be careful because there are buybacks. Tidehunter buys back into the game, Monkey. Not sure if he can TP though. Oh, they're gonna just destroy Wraith King. My goodness, so buyback wasted. And with that, a slight net worth lead 
for simply two base. How did that swing the net worth by that much? They used so many buybacks. It's a good question, Cinderin. Yeah. I mean, that kill was worth basically, let's see, those four kills with two buybacks ends up being a 3K swing in favor of simply two they base. Now they're going to pressure the right? tower. They bought back Puck, Gyro, and Disruptor. Puck and Gyro's buybacks are massively expensive. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do they give this up? I mean, I think they give this up considering that they have so many outer towers still. Yeah, you give this 60 seconds though for Wraith King. Yeah, they're, they're trying to get a push in the mid with the Spirit Breaker here for uh, Simply 2 base to try to get more out of this. Okay, well those buybacks paid yeah. off big time, but at this point oh, yeah. I don't really care if the gold lead is 20k. You have two cores without buyback. These kills for Arkosh are huge. If they find either Gyro or Puck, they probably just win the game. So, mm -hmm. you've got to be really cautious still as Simply 2 based here. Double Ravage will be available in 30 seconds, and that really paves the way for Arkosh to go for game-winning smoke. So you've got to... Yeah, they're going to respect that and back off from mid here, not even going for m even any meaningful chip damage on the tower. A little bit of a curious night there from Gremlo. AC completed. And Ollie is, uh, I mean, he's getting maxed out here, Cinder. He can replace his ags or his boots, I suppose, or something. <clears throat> but has a lot of items, it feels like. Yep. Same can be said for Wraith King, of course. Yeah, Wraith King doesn't have any true strike, though, and that really impacts this matchup quite a lot. Gyro, obviously, with a 35% evasion, uh, Wraith King. His mm -hmm. damage against Gyro is not significant enough that he can really reliably go for him without double ravage. Even then, it could actually fail. Like, if they commit everything on Gyro and he somehow gets saved and pops Satanic, probably lose the game. So, mm -hmm. gotta be very wary of choosing to go on him. I think Puck is a much better target. If they find the Ravage, they're just gonna blast him in like three swings from Wraith King. So. I mean, do you commit to the MKB before buyback? For, uh, for Wraith King? I, honestly, I wouldn't mind it. You have the buyback advantage right now, right? So mm -hmm. you know that this kill is game-winning. So you might as well go for it if you have the gold oh. right now, obviously. Forsaken Oracle pops the Shivas. They're going to see Empyrean. Oh, Double King jumps in, double taps him. Easy kill. <clears throat> no buyback. 90 seconds on the deck. Monkey gets off the, the Ravage. It's going to connect on one. It's really on the outskirts of the fight. Buyback onto the Weaver now. Another Ravage to follow as he dies. So no buyback for Monkey this time around. They just Prophet dies, but buys back in the game, can TP in any time he wants. Triple kill for Ryoya. After the beginning of that fight, was not expecting that. He's going for Dagon of all things. Nicely done from Simply 2-Base, turning this around heavily. Good Blink point. out for Double King. Onto the high ground he goes. Looks like Forsaken Oracle is going to sacrifice himself. No blink for seven seconds. And they finish him off. He does not have his ult for 45. Homie Miss is going to connect. Doesn't look like they're going to dive. Graham looking to grab... <clears throat> gonna grab the gem and keep pushing out the mid wave. So even with these three dead heroes, I don't think Simply 2 based will end up getting that much out of this. They can try for a high ground, high ground push, but it is a little bit scary. You're playing with a half HP Puck who's not finding a good rune. So Roche, oh, easily the better choice yeah. here. And this one will give a Scepter more than likely to Weaver. Oh yeah. And that is oh, yeah. very, very big against this combo. Of course, you still need to respect the Ravages. I would like if they give it to Weaver here, he will take it. I think he should buy BKB, actually. Just so that he can save people in Ravage. That's going to be game winning. He literally, all he needs to do is wait for the Ravages, pop BKB, Shikuchi in, and save the primary target, and that's the game. Because right. there's no other item that's reliably going to allow him to do that <laughs> than a BKB at this point. Gremlo. Oh. oh, being oh being he's going to get Static Storm, pops the BKB, and we'll be fine. Doing the usual shenanigans of chip damage. Very skillful play here. Ratting with these disgustingly huge Treants. I mean, they do a lot of damage. I'm surprised they're not... Okay, he did not uh, aggro correctly. I wouldn't have gotten it anyway. Backdoor protection kicks in. He's forcing rotation. It's valuable. It's worth trading your BKB for a Static Storm and two TPs. So, can't fault him for that. But yeah, the lead yeah, now... It's getting for pretty scary for Arkosh. Yeah, it is, but it's still, it's a 20k gold lead, but the win probability is actually only 72%, right? And it's just because at this point in the game, there are a lot of things that can still happen that have a huge impact. Puck getting caught by anything and getting burst, like killing Disruptor and Weaver before they get a single spell off. 
Uh, heroes are getting level 25 talents. You see Queen of Pain now uh, obviously having that spell block talent. We've had Wraith King 25 for quite a while. Tide is almost there, probably taking the one extra second on the Ravage stun. That's going to make his Ravages combined 7.6 seconds of chain stun. Um, quite a bit. I, th I wonder if he's going to buy a BKB on Tide. I would actually really like to see that at this point. Um, sell the hood, get BKB, just to guarantee you get two good Ravages. And even if you don't, the BKB is probably going to keep you alive. If you notice the last fight, he took tons of damage that weren't from Gyro. Uh, Gyro's not going to kill him on his own. He's too tanky for that. And with the BKB, he can also protect his Kraken shell. So... Okay, and nice I'm interested pickup. to see, because we've seen this before, we've talked about so much how the Ag's time lapse is so god tier, but sometimes it is not able to be used correctly, right? Yep. And it ends up being kind of a waste. Because mm -hmm. theoretically, they could have put it on the Disruptor uh, to get the muting of items, which could have a huge yep. impact on fights. So Flea took we'll a... just have to see if the time uh -oh. lapse is fruition or not. Little Nick. Yep. Time lapse. There it oh, is, all right. That already paid for itself. Yep, <laughs> it did. But... Not forsaken yes. Oracle jumps in with the monkey. Gets off the first Ravage, Eon This is proc'd, and it looks like they'll finally get the pesky I Weaver. No, nope. time lapses himself, he's fine. Okay. Second Ravage is used just for the Weaver. And it's a one for one just like that. We'll see if they can continue on as Double King deletes Disruptor again. Now has to back away as the BKB is wearing off. Still has that second life, of course, but he is completely surrounded. His team has abandoned him for the hills as Double King looks to be dead here. Yeah, yeah that was... They got amazing value out of the cheese, out of the uh, eggs on the Weaver, and of course out of the Ant Disc. This is the alternative for him to buying the BKB that we talked about. This is safer from the perspective of you being the primary target. If you go for BKB, maybe you don't react in time, you just get burst. But with Disc, you are safe too. Uh, you're safe for your teammates. It's a little bit delayed because you will get clipped by a Ravage, and then maybe your Disc will proc, and then you can get hit by a secondary Ravage. You're going to see the replay here. So they do get the disc there. And this Ravage, like, 0.75 second duration, right? On the disc. And mm -hmm. that cheese. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it was cheese. I thought he time-lapsed himself. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That makes more sense. As Ollie and company doing tons of damage to this Tier 3, they're looking for their second set of racks. And I think with without two heroes able to buy back from Arkosh, this looks like a free second racks at the very least. Oh, they got, get more. they got the, the Rubik. They got the force out some buybacks here, potentially. Rubik is dead, though. Does That's have the buyback for himself. If they don't buy back here, they're getting mega. Like, you have to buy yeah. back and try to fight your so. 3v5. Or 3v4, rather. There's no Weaver. They're very late to make this uh -huh. decision. Yeah, but the jump in from the Wraith King. He still has his ult, of course, Ollie. He's doing way more damage than Wraith King. That's for sure. As the Dagon finishes off his first life. Can they get him again, or can they just focus Rax? We'll see what they choose to do. Maybe both. Down goes Wraith King. That is a dieback into Mega Creeps. Simply two base look to have won, in all likelihood, their first game of the DPC. Yeah, they're sitting on well, Kremlo with a last ditch effort here. Trying to get <laughs> the bottom racks, but he gets caught by the base police uh, and sent to jail. That's jail that's in this case being Tartarus. Alright, that's a forehead plate. Thank you. I don't know, I'll never get tired of it. I, I don't know what to say. That camera shot is just, it puts a smile on my face every time. It's so silly. Forsaken Oracle has 6,000 gold, by the way. I think it's probably time just to spend it. Going for the sheep stick. I think he needs to buy Refresher. Oh. Yeah, maybe. He needs to Gets survive. Dagon, glimpse back. Okay, he will survive. Live. You think Refresher, huh? Yeah. They don't have enough Double damage. BKB. That's the problem. Uh, now they don't have a Rubik, Rubik is done, though. Yeah, oh that's goodness. three dead. No buybacks for anybody. But looking to finish this game is simply two phase. Of course, it's just the first game of the best of three. The Ancient is completely exposed and in Arkosh fashion, not going to call GG yet. But they will have to soon because it will be over. There's the Double Ravage. Very exciting stuff. And the Ancient has fallen. There is the good game, but that's from Rioya. Arkosh have not said, no, okay, Monkey said GG. All right, so now it's officially a good game. Simply two-based.
That was a very back and forth game. Do you think uh, that was very? I feel like it could have gone either way. But what was the turning uh, point for you? 